We got some news that the Habs might be looking to trade one of their first round picks in this upcoming draft if they can make another trade like the Doc trade. We'll be talking about that plus just the total amount of goals that were missing in the Habs lineup last night due to injury. And finally, Habs prospect Logan Mayu was nominated for OHL Player of the Year. You won't want to miss this edition of Habs Digest. Hello, bonjour, ahoy, and welcome to today's news edition of Habs Digest. I'm your host, Josh Goss, alongside my co-host, Jesse Poirier. And guys, we are right near 4,600 subscribers. We are almost at 5,000. Help us with that last push. The season's almost over. We want to see everyone who hasn't hit that button hit it now. 5,000 such a huge goal. So if you could help us out with that, we'd really appreciate it. Um, first thing today, Jesse, we're just going to get right into this. Sometimes we do other things first, but there was some news. Pierre Lebrun saying the Habs could trade a first round pick and no, it's not the one you might be expecting. I don't think they're going to trade what looks to be a top five pick at this point is guaranteed to be top nine. But according to Pierre Lebrun on insider trading, yeah, there's some blue stuff, blah, blah, blah. But Montreal is open to listening on the Panthers first rounder they have, especially if they can make a hockey trade like they did in acquiring Kirby Doc. Now, a first-round pick that's going to likely land in somewhere between the 14 and 17 area is still a very solid pick, Jesse. If Montreal gets the right offer, are you cool with pulling the trigger on a potential trade for this first? Well, Kent Hughes has definitely shown that he has a flair for making trades on trade deadline day. So, Or sorry, I should say draft, draft day. Night, but yeah. like, oh man, it's I think if there's one draft where you really want to hold on to your players, I think it's this one coming up. You know, let us know what you guys think because there is a chance, Josh, as well, that this could move up significantly. So I think once we know exactly where this draft does fall for the draft, well, you know, that's when we're definitely going to start getting some calls and it's definitely going to start heating up on that. Interesting, though, but, you know, if we were talking about last year, I'd say, yeah, absolutely mm -hmm. pull the trig on it. It's just this year, notoriously a very heavy draft class. You got to think that there's going to be some really good players just kind of sneaking through to that 15 sort of, you know, area. Sure. And we might be able to, you know, even get like another top 10 pick with Florida as well. So, I mean, with how deep it is this year, oh man, I'm tempted to hold on to it. Yeah, I mean, that's fair enough. I mean, a lot of people are saying this draft is just infinitely deeper than last year. Some people saying someone like Slavkovsky or Shane Wright in this year's draft might not even go top five. That's how crazy the top end of this draft is. And it doesn't really fall off until you get into the 20s and 30s. I mean, I'm seeing some scouts say like, if you get a top 20 pick, you could very well hit on a really good player. However, I'm seeing speculation like this Florida pick right now, Florida is in a playoff spot. So as of the recording of this video, that pick can't jump up. We'll see how Florida's season ends out because there's three teams in that hunt, the Islanders, the Panthers and the Penguins. We'll see who falls out of the race and stays in it. Um, but as of right now, Jesse, even if that pick jumps up to say like, I mean, let's just say it sits there at like 14 or 15. If you can make a trade like you did for Kirby Doc, because of course the Habs gave up Alexander Romanov and what the 13th pick basically for Kirby Doc. If something similar to that, because that pick's going to land in that similar area, can come up for, for example, maybe you give up a little bit more and you can trade for the likes of Pierre-Luc Dubois. If that opportunity is there, I feel like if you're Kent Hughes and you can get a guy, a hockey trade, as it said, uh, as Pierre Lebrun said, I think you might just might as well go ahead and pull the trigger. Well, what are your thoughts on, on if this pick plus some other uh, stuff, maybe a future pick and one of the Habs many prospects for Pierre-Luc Dubois could happen? Do you think that that's a reasonable move or are you in the camp of just wait for him to become a free agent? I'm definitely in the camp for him to become a free agent, but I think it's possible that Kent Hughes definitely does trade this. I think mm -hmm. there's a really high probability. Uh, and the reason I think his rationale probably is for that is, is that he's going to get a player similar to on a similar development timeline to Kirby Doc, where he's still a young player, can be molded by the organization, get our coaches there in with him, but still young enough and still, but still kind of old enough as well, where, you know, he's helping us to compete mm -hmm. sooner than later. Because I think Hab fans realize it's like, we've had a lot of injury. We've had a lot of bad luck, yeah. you know, in about two years time, we're going to really be able to really compete. So it's like, do you want to, do you want to maybe see if your prospects ready in that time? Or do you want somebody that for sure is going to be ready to go by that timeline? So I think even though I would like to hold on to him, I think there'd be a high probability that they do trade it. Kent Hughes has a flair for the dramatic. We'll see if uh, Gary Bettman announces the. It was a surprise last year when those trades went down. So hopefully something similar happens this year. But uh, yeah, very interesting. As Jesse said, let us know in the comments down below whether you'd like to keep or trade it or whether it depends on who you might get back. We'd love to hear from you. Um, speaking of injuries, you kind of mentioned some injuries. 
just last night, Jesse. The Habs sat over half of their total goal scoring from this season. Now, that sounds ridiculous, right? But let's take a look. Beyond Amrith, tonight, the Habs players who accounted for 117 goals this season were all sitting in the press box injured. Now, according to NHL.com, the Montreal Canadiens have 214 goals on the season. That means 55% of their total goal scoring was sitting in the press box injured. For perspective, just for this perspective of how many goals the Habs have, 214, and how many were injured, just McDavid and Dreisaitl together have 112 combined. I, I don't know if this is a record, Jesse. It feels like that has to be the most in the NHL. 55% of your total goal scoring sitting in the rafters, and Cole Caulfield is still the leading goal scorer at this point. Have you ever seen anything like this with Montreal? I mean, last year was bad, but that higher percentage? Just the fact that it's these last two years like this, I've never seen it before, and just makes you wonder it's like how did we get shut out last night yeah. well you know those those statistics you know basically show it all and it's something that we've known already but like just tremendous bad luck but you know i think it's gonna work out really well that we're gonna end up drafting really well mm -hmm. because of it we're actually once we come back we're actually a much better team than our record shows you gotta know having yes. way less injuries Obviously, we'd be way higher up in the standings. I think the hockey gods are kind of looking out for us, though. They know it's not quite our year yet. They're going to secure us that top three pick. They're going to secure us that top pick, dare I say. Oh, I'm ready. Um, you know, so it's all it's all going to work out in the end uh, just fine. I, I hope so, because right now the Arizona Coyotes are doing a great job at competing in the tank race with Montreal as they've lost like what, something like eight in a row. They're only one point ahead of Montreal in the standings. It's going to be a close race to the finish line. Um, you know, at this point, I feel like Cole Caulfield has a better chance scoring a goal with a bum shoulder from the rafters than uh, half the players on this Habs team. I mean, it's it's been ridiculous but last night was just a, another stepping stone but hey again all we can look at is who will be healthy come next year and hopefully hopefully a season like this one and last one won't happen again final topic today jesse speaking of some goal scoring habs prospect logan mayu was nominated for player of the year in the ohl now i know not everyone uh loves this logan mayu prospect not everyone loved the pick when it happened me, I was sort of one of them. I was very surprised, but it looks like he's on his way back. He's on good track to make the NHL. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. But Logan Mayu was one of the nominees for the Red Tilson Trophy uh, in the OHL, which is for the most outstanding player. Now, there's one nominee from every team, and as you can see, the arrow points to Logan Mayu of the London Knights. Jesse, he has 25 goals. Well, had. I mean, they're in the playoffs now, but he had 25 goals, 28 assists for 53 points in 59 games as a defenseman. Now, do I think he'll get it? Probably not. Someone like Matthew Maggio, who had 54 goals, 111 points, might get it. But man, to see that he's a finalist, to see he scored 25 goals as a defenseman, what is it with Habs prospects and this uh, this incredible offensive upside? It's amazing to see. And speaking of that upside, is I'd really like to see him on a line with Hudson yeah. because he provides that size that would be needed with Hudson, with Lane Hudson as a defensive pairing. But the thing is, as well, is that you need a defensive pairing that can keep up with him. Mm -hmm. It's not just enough just to have the size. So I think I like the strategy of kind of going with two offensive defensemen. I think that you can do it if you do have the size to also compensate with that as well, which I could see them being a really nice pairing in the future. Um, you know, nice to see him continue developing, uh, learning. You know, he's been doing some work off the ice as well just to uh, to improve some things as well. So, uh no, nice to see for him as well. Yeah, and uh, he's, a, he's a big body. Like, yeah, he's not known for his defense necessarily, but when you have a big body like that and you're not slow, it's pretty easy to at least be somewhat effective on the defensive end. And at the very least, he'll be able to protect someone like Lane Hudson if they end up playing together. That would be insane uh, for offensive potential. But you're right, Jesse. He's been working on himself on and off the ice. He looks to be a very solid prospect that'll crack uh, probably the AHL next season. And I'm excited to see where it goes. But that'll do it for this news edition of Habs Digest. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment, subscribe to the channel. Help us hit 5,000. We're so close, guys. We'd love if you could help us reach that goal. Um, yeah, we're so happy with all the support we've been getting. I'm Josh Goss for my co-host, Jesse Poirier. We'll catch you in the next one.